Good morning, first graders. Can you believe we are in our very last week of work here in first grade? We are going to have things to do next week as well, but this is going to be our final work week of work that we are going to turn in things. So you got to work really, really hard and finish up anything you haven't yet. And today we are going to talk about our final assignment for language arts, which is our writing assignment. And we are going to work on this all week so we can make it absolutely perfect, right? Practice makes perfect. So today we are going to talk about make-believe stories and then you are going to have a chance to write your own make-believe story. So we're going to get started with first of all what make-believe stories are. Okay, so if you can see behind me right here, I have some things that make a make-believe story a make-believe story. At the top it says writing. Make-believe stories are made up of at least one of the following. Things that are not real, animals or machines that act and talk like people, or places that do not exist. So make-believe is fiction. Things that can't happen in real life, like talking animals or talking machines, and I'm sure you've seen movies and we've read so many books that are make-believe. In my opinion, either, these are the most fun to read, right? As you get to use your imagination. So, your job this week is to write a story just like this. A make-believe story. I want you to take a second and think about what your make, favorite make-believe story is that we've read in class. Maybe it's been over our quarantine class time, maybe it was in our actual class, or maybe it's a story you read on your own. Hmm. I know for me, one of my favorites is Where the Wild Things Are, and we read that together in our story time recently. So I know that that's make-believe because that little boy was trouncing around in a forest full of monsters, and we know that that's not real, right? So that's a make-believe story. Now, what's going to be so fun is you get to make up your own. Think about how many things you can think about that are make-believe, that you can make up. And I know so many of you are so creative. So again, let's go over our rules of what make-believe stories are made up of. Things that are not real. Animals or machines that act and talk like people and places that don't exist. Okay, that don't exist. Good. So now what I'm going to read you is a story that was written by another student. And I'm going to read it to you as a story model. So this is a great example of what you can do to write. Now, can you write this exact story? No, this is someone else's. But it's a good example for us to read and go over together so that we can get an idea of what Mrs. Cheslock and Mrs. Chevelle are expecting out of us this week. Are you ready to read it? Cool. Maddie was a little gray mouse that lived in a soup can. She loved her home, but it had a big problem. Maddie's house rolled every time she would move. Maddie's friend, Charlie, saw Maddie had a problem. Charlie thought and thought, and then he smiled. He had a solution for her problem. Charlie pushed with rocks. Charlie pushed rocks on each side of the soup can. With rocks on both sides, it did not roll anymore. Maddie was so excited. She thanked Charlie and they went inside Maddie's house for tea. What did you think? Short and sweet, not too long, right? But full of detail. Let's go back. It says Maddie was a little gray mouse that lived in a soup can. We have our character, Maddie. They described her. She was a little gray mouse. Not just a mouse, a little gray mouse. So they gave us lots of detail, which is awesome, right? Then they told us what our problem was. What was her problem in this make-believe story? What was her problem? 
Yeah, her house rolled every time it moved. So, do mice really live in soup cans? No, they don't. And they don't have friends with names, right? So that's how we know this is a make-believe story. All right? And at the end here, it says they went inside Maddie's house for tea. Do mice have tea together? No, but this author was very creative and made up this character, the setting, the problem, and the solution. Okay? What was our solution to the problem that her house kept rolling? What did her friend Charlie, another character in the story, what did he do? What did he do? Go back in your text. Yes, he pushed rocks on either side of it so it wouldn't roll. And this is my water bottle here. And it's probably about the same shape because it's a cylinder, just like a soup can would be. And if you don't have something to stop it, it will roll because it doesn't have any flat sides here. So he pushed rocks on either side. Nice. Very good. So there is our good model of a make-believe story. I bet you can think of so many different characters, so many different settings, so many different problems and solutions for your story. This is your final assignment for first grade in your language arts, okay? So I want this story to be beautiful and I can't wait to read it. So what do we need to make a good story? I'm going to show you. This is your writing rubric and this looks like a lot going on, right? But I'm going to tell you we only need to look at one part and that's the narrative writing because that's what you're going to be graded on, okay? I'm going to post this so your parents can see it below as well. So we're going to look at how to make our writing the best it can be. Almost second graders need to know how to do this. Okay. So everything I have highlighted here is what I want you to focus on. Okay. So if you have the best writing ever, you're going to have four points. So look where it says four points at the top, the green, and then drop down to where Mrs. Chessock has highlighted. Okay? The narrative, that's your story. This is a fancy word for your story. Fully develops and elaborates, or tells me all about, the plot, the character, and the setting. A situation is clearly told, and the event unfolds logically. So that means we know what happens first, next, and last. Okay, you have words and phrases, characters, thoughts, and feelings are in there, and a strong ending. That is the best. That's how you're going to get the best grade on this writing, okay? Including all of those things, making nice detail. Now let's go all the way to one point. One point would not be the best grade here. And let's read if this is what's going to happen if you don't put so much into your work and it's not that great. That means your story it doesn't give me a situation or introduce any characters, okay? Your story doesn't have a first, next, and last, okay? I don't know any of your character's feelings, and I don't know your ending. So that would be one point, and that's not good. You want four points, okay? So that is exactly what we're going to work on today. So. I'm going to post that rubric below so you know exactly how to get an A, but I already know your writing is going to be absolutely beautiful. Okay, so you're going to get out your skills practice book. Go ahead and get that now because we're going to work on a few things together. So go grab that orange skills practice book for me. Right now, I will grab mine. If it's far away, if it's missing, pause me. <laughs> and go get your book. All right. I hope you have your book in front of you. You're going to turn to page 261, and it looks like this. Okay? Make-believe story. Okay, this is your writing plan that we are going to work on today. All right? So, who will read the story? Who will read this story with you? I am going to read your story, right? I bet your parents will read your story. I bet maybe your brother or sister will read your story. 
there's going to be lots of people that are going to read your story. So anyone outside of Mrs. Cheslock you think might read your story, you're going to write there. That's your audience. And you always have to think about who is going to be reading your writing. Because that might change what you write and how you write. So under audience right here, I'm going to write Mrs. Cheslock. I'm going to write my family. Okay. And maybe my friends. So let's go ahead and write that. Mrs. Cheslock. comma, because we're listing things, right? My family, comma, and my friends. All right. Nice. So I've written who is going to read my make-believe story. If you need to pause that there while you write and copy, go for it. Otherwise, you can do it by yourself or with help from home, okay? The next, right below, says purpose. What do you want the story to do? What's the point of writing the story? Why do you want people to read it? And what do you want it to do? What are our rules? What are we writing about today? We're not writing about whatever we want to write about, right? Exactly. We're writing a make-believe story. So what do we want it to do? Do we want it to make people laugh? Maybe. Do we want it to teach somebody something? Most likely no. That would be an informational story that we were writing. So how about, do we want to write it just to make people enjoy it? Yeah, I think that's why somebody wrote that story about the mouse and her home, right? It was enjoyable. So my story, I'm going to write, what do you want the story to do? To entertain. Okay, and that just means I want someone to read it and enjoy it. To entertain, maybe I'll put and enjoy. To entertain and enjoy. Maybe you want your story to make people laugh. You could write to make the reader laugh. Okay, whatever you want your story to do, your make-believe story. Good, so that's your purpose. Maybe you want the reader to really use their imagination too. I like that for a make-believe story. Go ahead and turn the page when you're ready after you've filled out your audience who and your purpose, what? Okay. This page is so important and will really help you with your writing here. Okay. This is your pre-writing. This is what you need to get done today. And the only thing you might really want to get done today for your writing. Because writing goes in steps. We know that. So, in order to do that, we have to think. That's our first step of our writing process is to think. So, our page here says... Plan your make-believe story using the story map below. And this story map is so important because we have character. That's who is in your story. Setting, where your story takes place. The problem. What was our problem in the mouse story? Our house kept rolling, right? And then our solution. How we solve the problem. So what was the solution in the mouse story? Yes, he put rocks on either side. Her friend Charlie did, right? So I'm going to give you an example of my story. And I'm going to write it out with you in my story now. This cannot be your story. This is my story. Okay? So I am going to write a story about some animals that go to a movie theater. Okay? And the giraffe... He's really tall, so people behind him can't see. Yeah, I like that story. All right, so my characters will say Jeffrey the giraffe. I'm going to write that under characters. I 
Jeffrey the giraffe. Amazing. Okay. And how about Leo the lion? Okay, so yeah. he's also there. And those will be my two main characters in my story, I think. Now, where's the setting? My idea was where to have this. The movie theater. Very good. So my setting, the pen's drying up. Come on, pen. The movie theater. And that's my setting, where my story takes place. Do -do -do, the movie theater. Okay. Now we're on to the problem. Now, what's the problem? My problem is people can't see past Jeffrey because he's so tall. Okay? So I'm going to write the audience cannot see the screen because Jeffrey is too tall. And I like thinking about that. That makes me laugh. The audience cannot see the screen because Jeffrey is too tall. And if you need more room, you could write in this white space below. Okay, because you have to write kind of small in these boxes. Now, what could my solution be to them not being able to see? Hmm. What is a funny? I want something funny. What could Jeffrey have to do? Oh, I know. They could ask Jeffrey to go all the way to the back to watch because he could see no matter what, right? Yeah. So the animals in the audience ask Jeff Marie to sit in the back to watch. And maybe because he moved his seat so nicely, they bought him free popcorn. What do you think? Is that nice and a slushy? The animals asked Jeffrey to sit in the back to watch and buy him all the popcorn he wants. Now, I have my whole story ready to write. But today was my thinking day. So I'm not going to write all this out. I already have all my ideas down. That's what's so awesome about a story map. This is your thinking and your organization part of your writing. And it's so important to do before you begin to write. Otherwise, your writing might not make sense. So let's go over what we have. We have our character, Jeffrey the Giraffe. And Leo the lion. The setting is the movie theater. The problem, the audience cannot see the screen because Jeffrey is too tall. Solution, the animals ask Jeffrey to sit in the back to watch and buy him all the popcorn he wants. Now, tomorrow I'm going to take my writing mat and I'm going to put it on paper, okay? And I'm going to do that with you as well with my story then you will do it with your story, okay? So today your job is to complete page 261 and 262, okay? Very good. I cannot wait to read these stories. I know that Ms. Bell can't either. And like we said, this is going to be your last, your very, very, very last assignment for your ELA, and it's going to be the last thing we have for you for first grade, okay? So we're so excited to read those. I cannot wait. But remember, today is just your planning day. So take your time. Think about what kind of make-believe story you would like to write. All right? I will see you soon. I love you. I miss you. Talk tomorrow.